the Herschel Walker story continues. And it's, you know, it's basically a dispute over what kind of a husband and father he was and what connection he has with the truth present day. Because he came out, what initially happened was the Daily Beast, which absolutely hates Herschel Walker and any Republican, came out with a hit piece. It was obviously an oppo research, you know, November type surprise, October surprise. Uh, comes out saying he's got, he, he paid for a woman to have an abortion back in 2009. And here's a card and the check f- from him in his with his handwriting for $700. Then we have the woman, uh, we're going to keep her name anonymous, but we know who it was and and he did it. And this is a guy who's advocating for, um, he's a pro-lifer now and says, I want a, an abortion ban with no exceptions, not rape, not incest, nothing. So they run the story. He comes out and say, it's a lie and told Fox, I, not only is it a lie, I don't know this woman and I don't remember sending this woman any money. Or I don't, I don't know, even know who this is. Uh, he went on, as for the rest of it, he went on Fox and Friends yesterday and said the following uh, to explain away the difference between <clears throat> the man he used to be and the man he is today. This is SOT 8. I've been redeemed, and I'm going to make this statement here. It's like they're trying to uh, bring up my past to hurt me, but they don't know, like, bringing up my past only energized me to go out and fight even right. harder. He tries to say that he's been redeemed since then. He's found God. He's a different man. Well, then last night... Uh, the Daily Beast does a follow-up report saying, you definitely know the woman because you actually had another child with her <laughs> and gets the woman to go on record. And she says, yeah, you know, he, he did pay for my abortion and I had another child with him and he definitely knows who I am. And his son, Christian, who's a Trump supporter, like diehard Trump supporter, has been out there saying, he's not a good man. He threatened my mother. We had to move six times in six months to avoid his wrath we were in danger. And it's really, it's causing a lot of consternation amongst Republicans who really want to take back the Senate, Charles, really want to take back the Senate. And yet this must be grappled with. So how do you think about it? Well, from my perspective, the the problem here will be if he's lying now. If this did happen and he's saying it didn't happen, if this report's accurate and he's saying it's false, I think he threatened to sue the Daily Beast. If it were part of his past, I think it would be you know, really fine, depending on how he dealt with it now. Now, he, he has a lot of baggage. He's been open about this. He says that he was a mess, that he struggled with mental health. He wrote a book about that, and that he's made all sorts of decisions that he really regrets, but that he found Jesus and he's saved by the grace of God. And you know, irrespective of the religious component, I think redemption is a good quality to have in a society. And I think it would be uh, an undesirable society in which someone like that couldn't change and then announce that he had changed. And that goes for paying for an abortion too. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with someone who is now pro-life having not been in the past. There's nothing wrong with somebody who's had an abortion or paid for an abortion saying these were the wrong decisions and I've changed. But if he did it and he's now lying about it, then that is a contemporary problem. That is a current problem. And I think that really does speak to his character now and uh, should actually bring into question whether or not all of his talk of redemption uh, is sincere. I don't know Mm. if this story is true or not. So I find it quite difficult to judge. But if it does turn out to be true and if he does turn out to have been lied, then it will hurt him and it should hurt him. Whether or not it will hurt him enough to lose the race, I don't know because we're about to see uh, new inflation news. We're seeing gas prices go up. It could just be, especially with how popular Brian Kemp, the gubernatorial candidate in Georgia, seems to be. Uh, It could be that he makes it over the line anyway. If it's a very close race, this could be enough to slough off enough people at the margins uh, to to hand the race to his opponent. I think about it, you know, so... And I should clarify, the Daily Beast did not name the woman in the follow-up reporting. They just said, um, we know who she is, and we've gone back to her, and now here's a new detail. She was so well-known to him that they conceived another child years after the abortion, and she continued on with that later pregnancy, uh, though she claimed that uh, Walker said it wasn't a really convenient time for him to have that baby either, but she decided to carry that baby to term and gave birth to him or her. Um, 
I, I, it's an interesting question to me because if all of this is true, if we assume the Daily Beast reporting is true, and he did threaten to sue, but then his lawyers, when asked, kind of walked it back, right? Like, mm, oh, well, we're looking into it. I predict there will be no lawsuit. Um, <laughs> do you want a man who you know is flawed in his m- former marriage, in his role as a man, and even in his connection to the truth about those behaviors? I would expect him to be embarrassed about this and to perhaps lean on the side of, of some dishonesty. I would. It's not, it doesn't reflect well on him. Um, mm. Do you want that man, if he's going to be elected to the Senate and tip the balance in favor of Republicans at a time when so much rides in the balance? You know, if, if we have another Supreme Court vacancy, Joe Biden's going to fill it in those last two years. Uh, and then it's going to have to get Senate approval. And who controls the Senate will be really important again. Um, Not to mention all the other agenda items that the House and potentially the Senate could stop or control over the next two years and beyond. You know, these senators get uh, six year terms. So it's a long it's a long deal once you get somebody in there. Anyway, do you care or would you rather go with, I don't know, Raphael Warnock? He's got some stuff in his past, too. He allegedly ran over his wife with a car. I'm like, stop, yeah, stop, no, great. He, he does. <laughs> you know, so, oh, so let's then, say he's squeaky clean. Let's pretend he's squeaky clean. You know, and he's like this minister and he's going to be like God-fearing man in there, but he's going to vote for this totally crazy left-wing white uh, uh, agenda, woke agenda. And and against all these other things, like against due process for men on college campuses who are accused. And he's going to vote for the most far left justice you could ever imagine. Like, it raises an interesting question. No, it does. It does. And and specifically on the question of abortion, too. I mean, if the idea is that pro-life Americans should look at this and, and be horrified by it, uh, I understand. But equally, Raphael Warnock's views on abortion are much more likely to have a, a mass impact than Herschel Walker's because, you know, Warnock is in favor of federal preemption of abortion law. In other words, wiping out 50 states abortion laws. They call this codifying row. Which should you prefer? I think it's a very difficult question. And it's one that I've grappled with and struggled with myself. I, I wrote a piece uh, just before the 2020 election about this as it related to Donald Trump. Uh, I was under no illusions as to Trump's shortcomings. And I laid them out in the first five paragraphs. And then I said, the problem is I, I also don't like Biden. And and you know there are a, a great deal of important issues at stake in our politics at the moment, uh, issues that affect tens of millions of people. And where the line is between someone's character and how someone will vote, it's really difficult to discern. Mm. Uh, It's difficult to discern which you should prefer. I mean, the way that I tend to look at this, the way that I always explain this to people if they ask how I view candidates is, as a rule, you should determine whether or not someone is so far beyond the pale that they've disqualified themselves and then vote for the person you agree with more. You know, So for example, in Florida, uh, I've, in fact, I've done this on your show. I've criticized Governor DeSantis for, for quite a few things, but I agree with him on more than I disagree with him on. And I agree with him on more than I agree with his opponent, Charlie Crist on. And I don't think there is anything about him that is disqualifying. So I'm going to vote for Governor DeSantis. That's that's fairly easy. With Herschel Walker, that becomes much more difficult. You know, is this disqualifying the lying that is? Um, do I agree with him more than his opponent? Yes, I almost certainly do. And how do I weigh that? And you know, I haven't actually sat down and thought about that in great detail. In part because I don't live in Georgia, so I haven't actually had to. Um, mm. But I agree with you. I I think it is tough. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, we'll get a lot of pieces about this from people on either side of this who will pretend that this is a very easy question that anyone who disagrees with them just doesn't care enough. It's just not true. You know, if you if you talk to people outside of the the, the crucible of uh, daily politics, just normal Americans who vote, they really struggle with this too. I can't count the number of letters and emails that I got after that piece I wrote about Trump saying, this is exactly what I'm trying to work out um, as well. And I would imagine the same thing's happening in Georgia. Have you ever had a friend or family member who's just naturally talented at things? They just pick up a sport or a hobby or a thing and they immediately become good at it. They make it look so easy. If you don't have that person in your life, it's you. And we're all secretly jealous of you. The good news is, no matter who you are, 
you can make great food look super easy with Good Ranchers. Good Ranchers sources the highest quality meat in America and they can prove it. And by the way, you can get it like pre-seasoned, pre-marinated, so they make you look good with very little effort on your part. Each piece of Good Ranchers meat is from Real American Farms and hand cut and trimmed by Real American workers. They only source from farms that meet their high standards of excellence, which means no antibiotics ever, no added hormones. Good Ranchers is so confident in the quality they sell that they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee on every box they ship to you. Plus, you can use my code, M-E-G-Y-N, Megan, to get free shipping and $30 off your first order. This is America's best meat and seafood sold by some of America's best people. They have won awards like Best Food Subscription, but their mission remains the same, bringing everyone to the table to share in the best of what makes life good. If you want the best, go with Good Ranchers. Visit GoodRanchers.com slash Megan and save on American meat delivered right to your door. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.